the Auto Palace 40 green flag lap shootout. And they'll start like this. Jan Leedy of Williamson, New York, the Hoosier Tire Pontiac, and Tony Hirschman, the point leader in the Len Bowler Beach Bluff Auto Sales Chevy. Row number two, Charlie Pastryak, his own Chevrolet, and Tim Connolly, a winner last year at Nazareth. Row number three, Steve Park in the Sunoco Chevy carrying our camera and the Polar Beverages Pontiac for Rick Fuller, the 92, 3, 93 champion, excuse me. Row four, Bruce D'Alessandro of East Hartford, Connecticut, the start finish, Oldsmobile, the wheels auto supply machine, and the Hummel Hot Dogs number 11 for Hot Dog Eddie Flemke Jr. Row number five, Mike Uanitsko in the Spearpoint Auto, 21 the Art Berry car, and Brad Hightala in number 54, a Pontiac from Stafford, Connecticut. Tony Papali of Meriden, Connecticut, and Carl Pastriak from Lisbon, Connecticut, a Chevy and a Pontiac. Row seven, Reggie Ruggiero, the Tour's all-time winner since they started Tour competition in 85, and that's the 9X uh, Auto Palace machine. Tony Ferranti, he's driving a Chevrolet outside of row number seven. Back in row eight, Wayne Anderson, the defending Tour champion, and Tommy Cravino, the young upstart of the Mario Fiore car. Row number nine, David Bergman, the son of former national champion Carl Bugsy Stevens. And from Virginia in the Pennzoil Mystic Missile, Satch Worley. Row 10, Tom Baldwin, he's in a Chevrolet, and Dan Avery from Connecticut. Row 11, Mike Stepanek, a former winner here. He's in a Chevy, and Ed Kennedy, the Park Ride Fly Chevrolet. Row number 12, Dan Mazervi in the Mobile One Pontiac, and John Zavisa, the Rainbow Farms Oldsmobile. Row 13, Bobby Gagetsis, the Oral-B Chevy out of Windsor, Connecticut, and Bruce Gomer-Taylor in a Chevy 03. Row number 14, the 1990 champion, Jamie Tomeno in a Pontiac, and the Riverside Park champ, Chris Kopeck in a Chevrolet. Row 15, Steve Boisano and Bert Marvin out of Colchester, Connecticut. Row 16, S.J. Avanchin won a track championship 25 years ago in Agawa, Mass., and Richard Clark in a Chevy. Row 17, Jamie Tomato, the former champion's brother, Greg in a Chevy, and Wade Cole, the low-buck little guy from East Heartland, Connecticut. If you're cheering for the underdog, number 33 is your man. Larry Fisher in a Chevy and Doug French in a Pontiac in the 18th row. Finally, row 19, Ted Christopher is there. Yep, gets another chance here today doing double duty in a Chevrolet and Jake Moroz in a Pontiac. You'll be riding along with Stephen Park. There's the roof cam atop the Sheba Racing Sunoco Vulcan Chevrolet number eight. It's the car you used to steer as you look ahead at Carl Pastriak. That view look familiar? Yeah, it looks real familiar, honestly. Uh, this is going to be a good race, Mike. That's Bruce D'Alessandro just behind. And Ed Flemke outside. And there's Stephen Park ready to go to work. And right next to him, Rick Fuller, number 77. And a look back at that big steamroller wide rear tire that helped get the power to the ground. Getting ready to race here. 40 green flag laps. If this doesn't get your pulse moving, you're just not a race fan. Slot cars is what Paul Boykin, who runs our in-car camera department, called them. They look like slot cars out there. They feel like it? They really do. You know, the tires, I mean, they're 13 inches wide. You, you drive these things into the corner just as fast and, and hot as you possibly can, and they go a car length deeper, and they stick. So fast here, they have to run restrictor plates, but we're set to go. Buddy, we wait all year for this race. This has got to be fun. Jeff Fuller's hands are sweating the <laughs> green dreddy, and here they come. You're in for a treat, folks. We're under green in the 40 lap Auto Palace shootout. In Day Glow Red, Jan Leedy of Williamson, New York. Who's your tire on the pole? Goodyear outside, and Charlie Pastriak at number five makes the move off the bottom for second spot. Drafting is so critical in these cars. Watch them line up single file here. Mike, you just touched on it. They draft here just like we do at Daytona and Talladega and Western Cup cars. You watch them down the straightaway. They, they really line up and draft down the straightaway. Watch them close up on Lady down the front straightaway as they go towards the turn. It is unbelievable how, how these cars draft. I'm not sure. I mean, they don't have a front windshield, a rear window like the Bush cars or the Cup cars. And they use that rear deck lid as a spoiler in the car, and the air comes through there, and watch this. Now, right, right there, get up alongside of him. He knows you're there now. He bam, <laughs> man to move. Man, I'll tell you what, this, this brings back memories. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Well, there's Charlie Pastryak right behind Stephen Park. 
Kastriak, great qualifier and has one tour feature win in number five. See him close right in there? Utilize that draft right there. I mean, if he had backed off a little bit, moved down, it would have been like holding a four by eight piece of plywood up there. Now, Park's not that much faster than Leedy. He just got the draft and a run at him. Right. Here we go. Now, Jan, see, now Jan will not make the move there. You cannot do that because he's behind him too close. He's get, Jan's a little bit quicker through the middle of the corner right here. What he needs to do is get that run up out of the corner without lifting and about quarter of the way down. He's not going to do it here either. Well, he's got a little help from the second place car, but uh, he, like you say, he does not have the time. These cars are too even. Front five are nose to tail. Front 12 are nose to tail. That yeah. white green numeral car is Rick Fuller right behind Tony Hirschman, the point leader in Len Bowler's number three. Here goes Leedy. He's looking and he's got the room. And he's got the help. And he's got the lead, maybe. He's got it. Yep, there he goes, right around the bottom. And Stephen Parks looks back in line ahead of Pastor yet. That five car that came with Jan instead of going with the eight car helped to propel him into the lead. I mean, I don't think that Jan could have done that without the five car getting down there with him. That was Charlie Pastriak. He's quite a race car driver up here. He wins a lot of races. He's on the move right now. He was his brother's crew chief. He was. He was his brother's crew chief, and he said one day, he says, I think I can drive these cars, and that was probably three years ago. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I, I can't believe how good he's, he's turned into his race car driver. He's been on the pole here previously, started third today. There's Rick Fuller down to the inside. Hirschman had a look. Nope, back up single file. <laughs> You're not afraid to get out and take a look here. No, no, you can get out there and take a look. You also notice that they're not afraid to use that front bumper. Now watch this A car. Look at this thing though. Right here, bump. Did you see that? I mean, with the Bush cars, it seems like the, the, the front bumpers are not made heavy enough. Mike, when you, <laughs> yeah, when you bump them like that, you actually help both cars. It uh, makes the graphic. RPM in the lead car pick up and the second car goes faster. When they give you a little shove like that, just don't do it going in the corner. Third place battle, and on the inside, Tony Hirschman of Northampton, Pennsylvania takes pasture yet. And Tim Connolly moves up in number 17, the Bobby Fuller car. That's another Fuller brother. And Stephen Park for the lead. I'll tell you what, that, uh, that's got some horsepower there. That, uh, Tony Correnti builds the motors in the 8 car, and Bob Bruno builds them in the 25 car, and, and, and they, are, they are going good. Mike, you see the rear spoiler is clear. The reason for that, the driver sits so low in these cars, when they use the rear view mirror, they can see through there and know what's behind them and which side they're on. And look at that little windshield in front of Jan Leedy. It's just uh, it's almost like a sprint car windshield, just enough to deflect the air up and over the driver and protect him. The rest of the air goes down the right side of the car and all up and over that rear spoiler. What Jan's hoping to do here, he's not trying to mess him up. I mean, he is on his bumper right here. He's trying to push Steven ahead so they can settle it between themselves at the end. See, bump, bump like that. I mean, they, they want to split themselves from that third place car, and this draft is just so important. Hey, they can do that. They are breaking away just a little bit, the front three cars. Lady is bump drafting Stephen Park down the straightaway. I mean, right up against oh. the bumper. That's amazing. And that is the chrome horn. That, that is definitely yep. the chrome <laughs> horn. Today's exclusive coverage of the Auto Palace 150 by Slick 50 on TNN is brought to you by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. What's the life expectancy of a front bumper on one of these cars? 30 laps? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Look at this. I love it. And Steven's loving it, too. I mean, a lot of people looking at this will probably say, man, he's, he's not, you know, he's not being good there, but that, that is part of his reason. Look at Tony Hirschman there. I mean, that car is flying. He's not getting any bump help, but he has closed in on the front two cars. He's ready to make a move towards the lead. They have about 12 car lengths on fourth place, Tim Connolly. Ricky Fuller bids on Pastriac for fifth. Nothing there. Wow, that car is really hooked up. You know, buddy, uh, th those two there helped help that three car get up there. Now watch this, watch this. Right here, push, no, they, they didn't quite do it. <laughs> they didn't, they, uh, but they will, they will. If they work together, they will do that. You'd make a horrible spotter. You'd never shut up. I know. <laughs> oh, man. My now, there's rate's going. now there's another Fuller brother, David, who's out on the roof spotting for Ricky. Do you have any brothers that aren't in racing? No, I don't think I, I do. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, Stephen Park in the lead. Scott and Patty Banzel, number eight. Jeff Fuller has won with here on previous occasion and won the championship with. Jan Leedy, great qualifier, great racer, doesn't have a lot of wins to show for it. An immaculately prepared car, that's for 25. The leader is on Goodyear's. 
And Lady there in 25 is on Hoosier tires. Not that time. I'm watching Steve Park's car, and I think he has a little bit of push from the center of uh, the corner out. Lady and them really close up on him, but, boy, he's a rocket ship down the straightaway. He, he's definitely going down the straightaway. Like you say, I mean, Jan is, is rolling through that corner a lot freer. Can get on the gas a little bit early and get a run up out of him. I don't really know if I'd show Steve in my full deck quite yet. And here comes the Tim Connolly closing in the fourth-place car. Anybody that ever watched Jeff Fuller drive a modified knows you're blowing smoke right there. I've never seen you uh, hold back any time. I don't know. I don't know. Steven's a good driver there, and, and you've got the point leader right behind you with Tony Hirschman. And I'll tell you what, I mean, and here comes my other brother. Here comes Bobby's car. <laughs> yeah, <what laughs> comes Tim Connolly. Man, this is gonna this is gonna be a good race. Too wide for second place. Leedy will hold it for now. Here's Glenn. Well guys, you talked about that little push that Steve Park might have put uh, might have in his car. Just a couple of laps ago, one of his crewmen came down to Leedy's pit and wanted them to stay single file, settling among themselves. But uh, with that little push, Jan had no choice but to try to get under him, and that allowed the rest of those cars to come up. But they really wanted to break away and settle it among themselves. A little collusion going on there, but nothing wrong with that, is there, Jeff? No, no, not at all. I mean, this this is just some hard racing right here. And you, I, honestly, I mean, I'm serious, buddy. I really don't know if I would show my car yet. Yeah, okay. And he doesn't believe me, Mike. <laughs> no, he well, doesn't. But well, now he's won a few races, too. You see Lady right there. He moves over to the inside. He keeps moving over like that. Sooner or later, he's going to understand that down the straightaway, he can't make the move. He's going to try it off the corner, I think. Behind this group, Rick Fuller is now fifth. Charlie Pastryak in sixth. And the leaders are going to get into lap traffic in about another three or four laps here. They're going to have to pick their way through some of the back markers. Let's check with Randy. Well, uh, Jeff Fuller's brother, Ricky, having a struggle there. I mean, he's got a pack of traffic behind him. Talked to his crew chief moments ago. Uh, Jeff, he's tight getting in. Now, you got a 40-lap sprint. Even if you get an opportunity to pit, how do you fix these cars? We know what you do to cup cars and bush cars. But, A, I guess he has to change his line going around there. Is that it? Yeah, that's probably his best bet right now with a 40 lap. You definitely don't want to pit, but what we can do with these bias ply ties is just add a little bit more stagger, but you're not you're gonna just see him hanging on. All right, the five is Charlie Pastriak, 77 is Ricky Fuller, 39, the black car, Bruce Delisandro, the maroon machine. That's the 21 of Mike Ewanitsko, former Spring Sizzler winner. From fifth on back, the racing is every bit as good as it is up front. Look at this. This is a freight train, folks. They don't have couplers, but they might as well. They're that close <laughs> together down the front straightaway. You know, as we've been talking, the eight car really got a really got a lead up on the uh, the other cars here in traffic, Jeff. But here's the move for fifth. Ricky down to the inside. Mike Uenitsko, the Long Island native, around the outside of Rick Fuller. He's going to move up into six in the Art Berry 21. You can see Rick's car get a little bit wormy off that corner there. He was. A little bit low on his groove, and when he touched the throttle, these cars are very sensitive. He just jumped sideways there. Now, here's the 39, that black machine, Ben Dodge's car, Bruce Delisandro, whose dad owned winning race cars at Riverside Park for years. He's right in the middle of this battle in that Oldsmobile, then Fuller, and then Eddie Flemke at number 11. <laughs> Doesn't look that tight from inside the car, does it? <laughs> Jeff Fuller getting a new perspective on things from up here in the booth. It doesn't look that tough, does it? You just saw Mike Uanisco waving his hand like that. He's telling Charlie, stay on my bumper. Push me, push me. Let's go. We got to catch them. And got to get away from Delisandro, Flemke, and Rick Fuller. They got, they're halfway through this thing right now. I mean, they got to get in line and, and push each other to, you know, to catch them. Guys. And they've got to get single file or they won't gain on the leader. Sweeping up the racetrack. Back straightaway, three wide amongst the lap cars. Uenitsko in 21, and the five of Charlie Pastryak. 39 is Delisandro. And they've got tra tough traffic just ahead. 90 car, Greg Tomato, 98 moves, 90 moves over. Or rather, that's Doug French in number 90. And John Savisa in 01. They're moving up also on Wade Cole. Battle for second, and that will be Hirschman in the Len Bowler number three. Freddie DeSero drove for Len Bowler. Bugsy Stevens won a national championship in the number three coupe. Hirschman has been working for it, lap after lap, trying to get by Lady. Lady has a little bit of problem getting through the middle part of the corner. He's made the pass now, but meanwhile, the three-car 
Hirschman. Tony Hirschman. Tony Hirschman. Huh? He's checking. He's out. free now, and he needs to go towards the front because the leader's getting away from him right now. Wayne Anderson won the national championship last year, drove most of the races in Lenny Bowler's car, and some in his own Sayville Ford entry. Anderson now back with his own equipment for 1995. So Leedy, and that's Tim Connolly in number 17, Bobby Fuller's car. Still working well. Now that's third and fourth place behind Stephen Park and the number three of Tony Hurst. Connolly looks to the inside of Leedy, not there. Turn three. These are the fastest stock cars that run New Hampshire, faster than the Bush cars or the Winston Cupper. Mike, it was about 20 car lengths different from first to second, and they closed right in now. Uh, these two cars racing side by side, you see Lady take a wider line and let him go. He knows he's much quicker right now. He's going to try to uh, make his car better by drafting along right now. Both these cars in third and fourth place on Hoosier tire. Up front, Goodyear for Stephen Park and Tony Hirschman. They are, they are closing in. Here's your leader. Now there's Park, second generation driver. His dad, Bob Park, longtime mainstay and feature winner on the modified tour. And there's Hirschman. Here is 17, Connolly, the third place car, and number 25. That's Jan Levy, the pole sitter. Look at Hirschman coming right now. I'm telling you, he is moving up on our leader. Just of, like he has a problem almost. A lot of smoke from number 90 going down into turn one. Doug French going to pull it down to the track apron out of harm's way. Boy, Hirschman is there. There's the smoke from French's car. How yeah. much would you be holding back now, Jeff? I don't think I'd be holding <laughs> back right now. Not even a little bit. 15 laps to go. Doug French pulls it off the speedway. Nope, that was Jamie. Greg Tomato. I'm sorry. Is that Jamie or Greg? That would be Greg in 98. You see Hirschman sizing him up there. He looked to the inside, but didn't quite make the move yet. I'll tell you what, you, you are going to see something here. Really? To the inside. If, if, so. if he could just get Tim to come with him, what he needs to roll out of that, that, that corner a little free. Double turn two, a spin up the racetrack, but now out of harm's way. The yellow is out. To the caution flag. Oh, new and ball Mark game. holds on. <laughs> 13 laps left. Wow, that brings everybody that was out of the lead draft right up in there now. Brad Hightala of Stafford Springs, Connecticut is the car that went around. By himself. You know what happened there? Um, the air, he was outside of that car. When he went in there, the air got taken off his car and the, and the back end just come right out from underneath it. Back underway. In the Howlett Scratch and Dent, number 54. Not too many national sponsors on these cars. The sponsors say, well, are your races on television? And the TV networks say, well, do you have national sponsors? So it, it's a tough situation for these modifieds, but boy, do they put on great racing, and we're glad to show it to you. 27 laps are complete. Stephen Park leads Tony Hirschman, Tim Connolly, Jan Leedy, Mike Uenitsko, and Charlie Pastriak. Welcome back to New Hampshire International Speedway. 40 green laps for this Auto Palace shootout for the NASCAR Modifieds from the Featherlight Modified Tour. A couple of cars made pit stops, including Satch Worley. And let's check with Glenn. Well, guys, we saw uh, pole sitter Jan Leedy fall back to fourth place. His car is just a little tight getting in the corner. Now, his brother Steve is the crew chief. Steve is up top spotting. That's a real family affair. Their father, Pops, is down here in the pits. And I asked Pops if he were the car owner. He said, nah, I said, uh, said Jan is a driver owner. He said, actually, though, Steve's driving the car from up top. So, real family affair here. Thanks, Glenn. We're getting set to go racing. We'll go green this time. Looking for Stephen Park. Back at Tony Hirschman. Hirschman with one feature win this season. Came in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Stephen Park. The winner last week at Beach Ridge Speedway in Maine. 
Let's see right here if Stephen Park can get a jump on Hirschman. On the throttle, and he does. Well, he better get a good one because yeah. he's got a lot of people there who want all of his money. Single file on the restart. 12 laps to go, we're told. Off turn two. Boy, Steve Park got in that corner. I don't think he had his tires clean. He looked like he really slowed up there. He just about got past. You and it's go. The maroon car on the outside of that Dayglow machine of Jan Leedy. Not this time. Tony Hirschman to the bottom. Park bends him off. Look at Hirschman's car in the middle of the corner. It is so good. He closes in like two car lengths. But down the straightaway, the eight car right now is just a Steve Park is strong. He is definitely strong down the straightaway. What you're gonna what you're gonna see here is uh, that three car, if he if he rolls through there like that and gets him here, and he doesn't even need help. Watch. Person trying to get the jump off the corner, make the move. You and Itzko still going after Jan Lee. Don't count out the third place car there, Tim Connolly. That car is working very well. And like you said, I don't think he's put all his cards on the table yet. Look at him move in there. Hands very still. Tries on the inside. Can't make the pass. Connolly in number 17 won at Nazareth, Pennsylvania last year. This year on the short trioval at Lee, New Hampshire, he went to victory lane. Ten laps to go. Move by Connolly to the inside. Now further back, Bruce Delisandro, Rick Fuller, Charlie Pastryak, and Tommy Cravino in that magenta number 44. Looking a little like uh, Briari's old screaming yellow zonker. It was purple and yellow. Up front. Look at Jan Lady move in here. He's the fourth place car there. The one with the, uh, what would you call that? Day glow top? You bet. And Connolly again to the inside. And Leedy will pull up in the high groove. Wow, that's a power move. He couldn't quite make it work. Jeff, right. it looks like All these right. cars stick. Here Sorry he goes, goes. Connolly. Here he goes. He set him up. He got he's a good run off the corner. I don't think he's going to be able nope. to make it there. Looks like he's going to need some help there. Jeff, it looks like these cars handle so well, you can change lanes in the corner even twice at the same end of the racetrack. You know, you really can. These, these cars only sit two inches from the ground. Oh, I'm going to be talking no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff Fuller can tell you something about this. That just like Daytona, he was too close when he pulled out in the draft there to actually get any momentum to go by now. There He's it is. A good run here. Good yes. run off the bottom, and Hirschman is up to the left rear nerf bar, and uh, he's coming, and he's coming, and he's oh, out of no. it. Ladies on the outside trying to get the third place. Outside. Jan Leedy digging hard off near the nerf bar of Tim Connolly. If you'll notice, Steven is actually getting on the straightaway now and he's trying to snake that car. He's going from the top of the track to the bottom of the track to try to break that draft. Seven to go. Third place side by side and Connolly. E. Edge is ahead just a little bit. Wobbled the car. Four cars under a blanket, folks. Can't get much better in this. What a battle for third. Look, look at how close they are. Yes, and there are no fenders over those tires on the front there, but they can get up in the air in a hurry. Six of the 40 fastest stock car laps you've ever seen in New Hampshire. Left to go, bang. And Hirschman gives Park a wake-up call. Further back, Ricky Fuller to the inside. Tommy Cravino trying to go by on the high side. Won't do it this time. Saw Ricky waving there, telling him to stay in line. Here comes Lady. He's going to try to move there on Connolly. Not going to work. I'll guarantee you that the eight car is not holding anything back right now. Yeah. Here we go. Boy, he had just about enough car up there. Oh, to and here's run. Lady. He's Lady, back. watch that move Hirschman made. Figure he'd drop in, and Lady tried the high side, and it almost worked for second place. But he's not going to get him this time. <laughs> he might. <laughs> Actually, right up against his bumper right there. Four to go. You know, when you're in a situation like this, you really don't know whether to go with... Oh, here we go again. If Lady goes with him, he'll make the move right now. 
Where is Jan Leedy? He is down there with Hirschman, but again, Hirschman rolls out of the throttle. Now, Hirschman's going to get a run off of this corner. He may have enough to pull up the side coming off the corner if nope. he keeps the momentum right here. Didn't. Didn't. Look like he had to ease it just a ah, little bit. Ah, look at him. There he goes. He's not going to no. back. No. <laughs> But he's got all the help he can get. Three laps again. to go. Right now, you can feel that, Makai. You can. And Leedy gave up on him. Leedy went Leedy. to the outside with Park. Wow. I'll so battle you, for second, and that is the best thing Stephen Park can see in his mirror, is those two cars side by side. Well, Hurstman's going to beat him. He's going to have to drop back, going in the corner, and get a tremendous run so he can make that move down the straightaway on the inside. That's exactly right, buddy. I mean, he's got to have a power length or two between him to build that head of speed up. Two to go. Back straightaway. Single file lap car. That's the reason why. That's the goal. He's got to do this. White flag lap. Now, Hirschman has a car length to get a run. Gets the pedal down draws up on Stephen Park. Stephen is snaking Whoa. all over the track. Stephen took the bottom, and Hirschman had nowhere to go. This is the bell lap. Yep. Tony Hirschman will have one more run at Stephen Park. What will Jan Leedy do? Jan Leedy's sitting there with a car that could win if he can get any kind of run. Park zigzag. Hirschman may be stuck with the outside. Here comes Connolly down to the bottom. It is going to be parked by a car lane. Oh, here goes Connolly. He's got the inside. He's got the move. He's up to third. Looking for second. Stephen Park holds on to win it. Good race. Boy, is that good race. Rick Fuller holds off Tommy Cravino to lead the second pack across in fifth place. Ha <laughs> ha. He's not too happy. A happy Stephen Park has just scored the biggest win of his career. It's two in a row for Scott and Patty in, in Sunoco. We'll be back to meet Stephen Park in Victory Lane right after this. It's Park defeating Tony Hirschman. Today's exclusive coverage of the Auto Palace 150 by Slick 50 on TNN has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. And by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. Stephen Park has just scored his sixth career Featherlight Modified Tour win. Glenn Jarrett's with him. And the second in a row, Mike, and he did no damage to the car on the racetrack, but when he got out of the car, he jumped up on the roof to celebrate, put a nice dent in it. But, Steve, great job, man. You showed your hand early, and then you held off everything they had to throw at you. Yeah, it was, uh, we were a little worried about the rain, if it was going to change the racetrack or not. Uh, but I think it kind of played into our hands, and the uh, Snoker Race Wheel Chevrolet was wicked fast in the beginning. Uh, I saw Tony Hirschman coming on at the end, and I knew that, uh, you know, we just had to try to hold him off and uh, try to win the race today. Well, now, Jeff Fuller was part of our commentary team. He used to drive this car, and I got to give him credit. He wasn't really saying all that much about it, but uh, I think he knew you had him covered. Yeah, I've run behind Jeff in this car before, and I know how powerful this car is, and uh, it's great to have Jeff and Mike Joy commentating for the Modifieds. Uh, I'm sure they did a great job. I'll have to watch the tape later on. Okay, congratulations again to Stephen Park. As Mike said, his sixth win, second in a row. Let's go down to Randy Pemberton. Well, Tony Hirschman has climbed from his car. Tony, you gave it everything you have. Is it frustrating uh, not to come out of here with a win? I mean, you were all over him. We were all over him, but he has awful strong in a straightaway, his motor is. And uh, we were beating him through the turn big time, but he was strong in a straightaway. And I really had at the end there nobody strong enough to push me by, and I was trying to do it all by myself, and I just couldn't get it done. We were close, but that was it. Okay, he said to uh, me just a moment ago he wanted to win awfully bad here at New Hampshire, but uh, maybe next time. Congratulations on a good run anyway. Thanks. Well, he'll Mike extend Joy. the point lead. Thanks, Randy. And Jeff Fuller only wore out the brake pedal up here in the uh, booth. <laughs> Bend it up big time. Well, if you want to know what Wicked Fast was, you just had to watch Stephen Park today as he beats Hirschman Connolly, Jan Leedy, the pole sitter, Rick Fuller, fifth, Tommy Cravino, Mike Unitsko, Bruce D'Alessandro, Eddie Flemke, and defending tour champion Wayne Anderson, the top ten. Tom Baldwin, Carl Pastryak, Tony Ferranti, Jamie Tomano, Mike Stefanik, Ted Christopher, Ed Kennedy, Reggie Ruggiero, Burt Marvin, and Tony Papali, the top 20. Well, what'd you think, Jeff, from up here? I get more nervous watching them up here, and I, I'll tell you what, I mean, that was, that's some racing. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to protest. I want to see more of this. <laughs> I want more than 40 laps. 
I do too. Folks, it's great racing. You have to see it at a modified track near you. Or right to NASCAR and right to the TV networks if you'd like to see more modified racing. Our congratulations to Ricky Craven, the Bush Grand National North winner, and Stephen Park, winner in the Featherlight Modified Tour. For Buddy Baker, Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Fuller, for Larry McReynolds, Glenn Jarrett, and Randy Pemberton, I'm Mike Joy. It's been a rainy day here at Loudon, but what great racing. So long, everybody.